The first session will be, first talk will be chaired by Dr. Lakshmi Kande of NIT Durgapur. So I hand over the mic to Dr. De. Okay. Uh, thank you, to Professor. chair the Sir. talk of Dr. Shankar Raj. Okay. Thank, thank you, Professor. Shankar Raj, how are you? We are not having yes, any. Sir, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. <laughs> how are you, sir? <laughs> Yeah, we have seen uh, 2017 December. Uh, I visited uh, yeah. IIT Varanasi. <laughs> yes, so at least you remember. No, no, no. Oh, I, I always think about you, sir. So last time I have uh, uh, sent some of my students thesis evaluation. Okay. Also, I I requested you <laughs> for you as an examiner. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I, Professor Day, please okay, please introduce so, uh, the speaker then. Okay, okay. So thank you, Professor Som, and it's a pleasure for me to uh, share this session. And uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody uh, present here. Uh, first, I like to uh, just introduce a brief introduction of Professor D. Sankar Raj. Uh, he is an assistant professor at the Department of Mathematics, MS University, Tirunelveli. He received his PhD degree from IIT Madras in 2009. He also received UGC DS Coterie Fellowship for pursuing postdoctoral studies. He has published 22 research articles uh, in reputed journals. Three research scholars have received their PhD degree under his guidance and four are uh, at present ongoing. And I personally know there are very nice articles uh, in reputed journal of uh, Sankar Raj. I think uh, he, he will give uh, his talk on uh, an elementary based proximity point theorem in metric spaces. So, Professor Sankar Raj, uh, it is your turn. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank Welcome. you, sir. <clears throat> I am very much uh, thankful to Professor Lakshmi Kanda Day uh, for his uh, nice introduction me about uh, to the audience. And uh, I am very much thankful to Professor Som for his kind invitation for me to this deliver this lecture in this uh, international conference uh, on nonlinear applied analysis and optimization 2021. Good afternoon, good afternoon, professors and uh, colleagues and my dear students and friends. As uh, shall I start? I mean, yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes, yes. yes. Ah, okay. As the title of my talk suggests, that it's an elementary best proximity point theorem in metric space. So, we are going to uh, prove one uh, simple elementary metri uh, best proximity point theorem in this, uh, uh, this talk. So, the talk uh, is organized in this way. That first, uh, I'll give the brief introduction. What is the problem we are going to deal to for in this talk? And we'll give some preliminaries, that is, uh, some tools which we are going to use uh, to solve the problem. And finally, we'll state the statement of uh, uh, today's problem. Uh, we'll prove the uh, elementary best box for the pipe theorem. And this one is a, a joint work with one of my students, uh, Ms. Danlakshmi. And uh, she, we, we both work together with this pro this problem. So first, uh, I'll go to the uh, I'll define what we are going to discuss today. Okay. So as usual, uh, let A be a non-empty set and f is a function from A to x be a any function. You take any function, and a point uh, x not is said to be a fixed point if f of x equal to uh, f of x not equal to x not. If that is the case, then we say that x not is a uh, fixed point for the function, given function f. The, uh, met, the fixed point theory is a, uh, is, is a, is a two, fixed point theorems are a tool which gives a necessary or a sufficient conditions which we can assume on the functions or on the space so that we, which will ensure that at least one, best, one fixed point for the given map. That is a, uh, the main motive of the fixed point, the, what, under what conditions and what are all the assumptions we can make on the space, uh, the, the domain or the go domain or the function f so that we can get the fixed points. This is the main motive for the fixed point theory. The elementary best box 20 point theorem, uh, the elementary fixed point theorem is uh, uh, the well-known Banach contraction principle. It says that we should assume that the domain has to be in a, a complete metric space. 
and the function has to be a contract so we are all these are all the assumptions we are making on the functions as well as the domain uh, the space so that we are getting a fixed point okay the interesting part is uh, the contraction contractive type mappings for example the banner contraction principle edelstein fixed point theorem karistis theorem kanban fixed point theorems these are all deals with the contractive or contraction type with the in between uh, some contractive type type of mappings for that the metric space structure is sufficient okay so uh, at most we may assume that the space is to be going to be a complete metric space and we are going to generate for this type of contractive contract contractive type mappings we are going to generate an iterated sequence which is going to be some somehow it is going to be a cauchy sequence and we it is going to be converged and that uh, that uh, end point uh, the limit point is going to be a fixed point so that is the way we are uh, we are getting the fixed point for a contractive and contraction type maps but this will not work for a non expensive mappings so if you are going for a non expensive mapping uh, we may not get a fixed so we can find a non expensive mapping which may not have a fixed point if it is having a fixed point it may not be unique even if it has a unique fixed point the sequence of it trade need not be converged to that point so, so it is something more difficult to, uh, uh, to work with a uh, non expensive map than the contractive or contraction type mappings so brower the brower gode uh, fixed point the, uh, I, i'm not going to talk about any generalization of this type of mappings but these are all the very standard theorems in uh, non expensive mappings okay so brower's what uh, every non empty uh, weakly compact convex subset having a normal uh, structure property then that space will have a fixed point for any non expensive mapping so for this the metric structure is not sufficient so we need we are going for a banach spaces so particularly a lot of geometrical banach spaces like a uniformly convex banach space hilbert space so such a thing we will use for a non expensive mapping the next thing is it is going to be a continuous function it is much more difficult than working with the non expansive mapping because uh, continuous uh, functions working with continuous it, 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 it will be uh, on the border of uh, whether we are working in a metric fixed point theory or in a <laughs> topological fixed point theory that that it is in the border case okay so working in with for continuous functions it is too difficult it is too difficult because uh, the uh, for example uh during my phd times my guide uh, his only condition is those who want to complete their phd after even after the submission of thesis also we have to complete we have to prove the uh, at least one proof of brower's fixed point theorem there are so many uh, proofs available uh, for brower's theorem using multivariable calculus using algebraic topology so many techniques are available for uh, brower's fixed point theorem we have that, that's what i am telling that, that it it will falls under the topological idea most of the topological ideas we are going to use than the uh, non expansive mappings so shouders fixed point theorem and the, these are all the continuous functions so here we need a, a topological idea very strong topological idea only will help to prove this type of uh, uh, fixed point theorems for continuous functions but the interesting part is the shouders fixed point theorem what it says that suppose if uh, k is a non empty closed as a non empty compact convex subset then any continuous function from k to k it will have a fixed point that is a shouders fixed point theorem but to prove the shouders fixed point theorem using uh, we are going to use a simple lemma okay that I'll, lemma I'll, I'll show that this is the uh, one of the interesting fixed point theorem for continuous function in a metric space okay so uh, i already told you that uh, for working with the uh, uh, kind of fixed point theorem for uh, continuous functions we need a uh, lot of uh, topological ideas but this is a theorem it is much interesting to see that this is going to be give the fixed point for a continuous function in a metric space structure that is uh, one of the main idea i'll come back this come back to this theorem later so i'll tell that uh, i'll give a, a small definition that a metric space x is said to have a fixed point property if any continuous function f from x to x has at least one fixed point that is the the space is said to have a fixed point property that any whatever be the continuous function it will always have a fixed point so simple examples are r has no fixed point property why because we are having a translation map so x goes to x plus some one it is a continuous function which does not have any fixed point and uh, closed interval a comma b has a fixed point property this is nothing but our this is a, 
uh, we can say that this is a Brouwer's fixed point theorem for a one dimensional space. But uh, at, as an elementary, a Brouwer's fixed point theorem is equivalent to uh, intermediate value theorem here. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. So, uh, uh, Brouwer's fixed point theorem for one dimension is nothing but the uh, intermediate value theorem. These two theorems are equal and intermediate value theorem as well as the Brouwer's fixed point theorem are equal and in R. So this will have a fixed point property. So now I'm going to state a theorem uh, which gives, which ensures the existence of fixed point for a continuous function in a matrix space structure. This is something more interesting and it is a very elementary theorem. That is X be a compact matrix space. And suppose that for any epsilon positive, there is a continuous function G epsilon such that, X, that it is a function from X to X, which satisfies the following two conditions. What is the first condition is, it has a epsilon distance fixed point. That is epsilon approximate fixed point, we can say that. If it is a fixed point means distance between X and F of X equal to zero, but here it is not zero. We are having, which is less than epsilon for some quantity. So it is called this X satisfying this condition is called E epsilon fixed point for G epsilon. Okay, so this is the assumption for every epsilon positive that is a continuous function G epsilon from X to X, which satisfies the condition. First condition is distance between X and X and G, uh, G epsilon of X, which is strictly less than epsilon for any X belongs to capital X. And the next condition is this the the uh, the, uh, the uh, image of uh, X under G epsilon has a fixed point property. This is an another assumption. G epsilon of X has a fixed point property. That is every continuous function H from G epsilon of X to G epsilon of X has a fixed point in G epsilon of X. So these are all the two assumptions we are making. So if these two assumptions are there, then any continuous function F from X to X has a fixed point. So uh, it is a something more interesting uh, fixed point theorem, most interesting and very elementary fixed point theorem in metric space structure, which gives, which ensures the fixed point for a continuous function. So one can find a, a the proof of uh, this theorem in uh, uh, Smart's fixed point theorem, uh, Cambridge University Plus. This book, in, in this book, it, uh, the proof of this theorem is available. Okay. Now it is my aim to our aim to uh, generalize this fixed point theorem in a metric space structure. That is the problem today. We are going to generalize this theorem to uh, this fixed point theorem into best proximity point theorem. Okay, before that, let me introduce what do you mean by the best proximity point and everything. Okay, so let us consider two non empty subsets uh, A, B of a metric space, and F is a function from a union B to A union B is a mapping and we say that F is cyclic if F of A is contained in F of B and F of B is contained in F of A. That is, it is goes all the elements in A will map to B and all the elements of B are mapping to A. And if note that we are not assuming anything about whether A and B are disjoint or non-empty or not, they are non-empty, but we have not assumed anything to have that A intersection B is empty or non-empty, nothing I am assuming that, okay? Just A and B are two non-empty sets. And F is a function from A union B to A union B, B a mapping. So we say that F is cyclic if F of A is subset of B and F of B is a subset of A. A point X belongs to A union B is said to be a best proximity point of a cyclic mapping F if distance between X comma F of X, which is equal to the infimum of all the elements. Okay, the dis this is nothing but the distance between A comma B. <clears throat> this is nothing but the distance between A comma B. Okay. Hello, am I audible? Hello. Yes, you are audible, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry, some power fluctuation. <clears throat> okay. So we say that X belongs to A union B is said to be a best proximity point if distance between X and F of X is nothing but the distance between A and B. A and B are two sets. So we are finding the me in infimum of distance between small a comma small b where a is an element in capital a and b is an element in capital b okay then <clears throat> okay now we are uh, going to give one simple example that okay you take a it's a very elementary example you take a 
A is a 2 point, 0, 0 and 0, 1. B is an another point that is 1, 0 and 1, 1. You can easily visualize in your, uh, this is an R2. So we are having a, uh, A and B are two sets with the uh, uh, usual metric. So clearly the distance between A to B, A, uh, distance between A and B is equal to 1. And note that one of the things I, I would like to tell here, if A and distance between A and B is equal to 0, then the point X, the best proximity point is nothing but the fixed point of F. Okay. If distance between A and B is equal to 0, then automatically the best proximity, a best proximity point of F is nothing but it will become a fixed point of F. So in this way, the best proximity point theorem is considered as a generalization of fixed point. Uh, so we call sometimes we call it generalized fixed point or anything. Okay, this is a best. So in this sense, that we are uh, best proximity points are much interested. Okay, okay. and note that not uh, most of the cases uh, we cannot uh, convert all the fixed point theorems into best proximity point. That, that, that all uh, it is very difficult because why <coughs> the function f a, from a union b to a union b if we are defining this way. We cannot apply any fixed point theorem which involves a connected, uh, sorry, co co convex sets. Suppose A and con A convex, B convex, then A union B need not be a convex set. Okay. So in this sense, we cannot generalize any fixed point theorem to a uh, best proximity point. It is something more difficult. Some, sometimes it is difficult. Uh, particularly, uh, a best proximity point need not be a continuous one. Okay. If, if A equal to B, then it will become a continuous one. Such a uh, problems will be there in uh, dealing with the best proximity point. Okay, so I have given a two, uh, an example that capital A and capital B. Now we are going to define uh, A union T is a function from A union B to A union B, given by T of x equal to x comma y, which is equal to x complement and y complement. I, I have given like this. It is nothing that zero comma zero is mapping to one comma one, and this fellow one comma uh, zero comma one is mapping to uh, 1 comma 0 that's all we are we are having we are mapping it to be diagonally that's all okay so whatever we think uh, yeah, if x belongs to a you know, x means what 0 comma 0 or 0 comma 1 the distance is always be the diagonal element so this is 1 1 so diagonal element is root 2 which will be always greater than 1 note that this function is a continuous function okay because the domain what domain and codomain what we are having is a discrete set so any function from a discrete set to discrete set is a it is going to be a continuous function. So this is a continuous function which does not have any best proximity point. Okay. Now this trigger to uh, uh, to make a best proximity point theorem as uh, as I mentioned the uh, uh, smarts theorem. Okay. So this this is the one of the motivation to generalize this theorem to best proximity point setting because in ordinary sense we cannot have a uh, best proximity point uh, uh, continuous function need not have a best proximity point. Okay, so this is an uh, uh, more idea. So now we will go to the preliminary. What are the things we need to uh, prove this theorem? Okay, these are some notations. The distance between a comma b already I have discussed, and these are a naught and b naught is nothing but suppose if you are having a uh, a naught. Suppose uh, you consider two squares. Okay, this is a and this is b. Two squares if you are having, then the corner elements okay what are all the elements which which attains its distance between a comma b are called to be a naught what are all the uh, elements in b which attains its distance between a comma b for some uh, uh, x in a that is called a b naught so these are all a naught and b naught we are having and uh, now uh, i'll take uh, another thing that let a be a non empty compact subset of uh, x and note that all the statements i am giving here i am assuming a uh, almost a, a very strong condition here the set need not be a compact set okay but but i am assuming all the thing because we i am going to work only with the i am going to generalize this theorem only okay so which which i am going to have a only with respect to the compact matrix so i am stating all my theorems in a compact matrix space it doesn't matter you can even define a, a, a metric projection operator in any subset but uh, i am assuming very strong conditions okay a let capital A be a non-empty compact set and the metric projection map which is defined like this P A of X which is equal to all those points in A which are very near to uh, which, 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 which has the distance between X and A is equal to distance between X and capital A that is the thing where uh, this fellow this uh, 
2 to the power a is nothing but the non empty subsets of a. These are all non empty. That means this P a is a multivalued map. P a is a multivalued map. Now, uh, we are going to have a we are going to make this multivalued map to be a one one map. So, we are introducing an another concept called P property. It is something more geometrical idea that is you consider two sets A and B. Suppose if you are having a uh, two points, uh, suppose x1 and y1, x2 and y2. If these two distances are equal to distance from the negama V, then these both distances are equal. So that is a thing. So this is called a P property. And this P property is now we can use uh, almost a best proximate, lot of best proximity point theorems which will use this uh, P property. Okay. Now we are going to define a new function called a projection operator with the help of metric projection operator. So I'm assuming that A and B are two non-empty compact subsets of a metric space capital X such that the pair A comma B has a P property. Why we are making a P property means the, the help, the P property will make the metric projection operator to be single valued. That is an idea. To make this metric projection operator single valued, we are making that P prop. We are using this P property. Then we have defined P A, P of X, which is equal to P B of X, if X belongs to A, and P A of X, if X belongs to capital B. So uh, this function, this, this, this operator, metric projection operator is, uh, uh, is a single, it has some properties. So these are the following properties we can easily prove. This metric projection operator is a P from A naught to uh, P of A naught to B naught, and P of B naught to A naught. And Whenever distance between x comma y, which is equal to distance between a comma b, if one only if this x equal to just a minute, just a minute. Okay. Okay, sorry. Okay. So the next thing is we are uh, uh, using this UC property. UC property means suppose A and B are two non-empty subset of a metric space and is said to be this pair is said to have UC property. If you, you take two sequences Xn and Yn in A and uh, sorry Xn and Z in, in A and Yn is in B. And having the property that distance between xn and yn converges to a distance between a comma b and zn comma yn converges to distance between a comma b that means this side the sequence is same and this side we are having a two sequence this if these two sequence satisfies this condition then automatically the distance between xn and zn will converge to zero so uh, any uniformly convex Banach space is having a, a uc property so this uc property was introduced by suzuki and et al uh, in 2009 and using this UC property, they have proved uh, so many best proximity point theorems. Okay? And note that uh, we are having two different properties. That is number one, that is called uh, P property. And number two, we are having a uh, UC property. These two properties are totally different. Okay, And uh, this UC property, make, uh, this, so in some sense, this U UC property may consider as a a sequential approximation of this p property okay so uh, but uh, these two these two properties are completely different we can find an example we are having uh, examples of a uc property which does not satisfy p property and having an examples of a p uh, uh, spaces which satisfies p property but not a uc property but interestingly if the domain a and b are compact sets okay if a and b uh, okay I'll, I'll take the if A and B are two compact subsets of a metric space, and if A, B has a P property, then automatically it will have a UC property. Okay, I already told you that uh, P property and the UC properties are completely different. We can find examples of having P property, but not UC property, having UC property, but not P property. But if the domain is a compact set, and if it has a P property, then it must have a UC property. This is one of the interesting uh, geometric proof we can uh, we have proved and now we are taking another lemma that metric projection operator which we have defined earlier that is going to be a continuous map that is going to be a continuous single valid map okay that also we have proved and now 
uh, we are going to de define a new uh, concept called epsilon closed mapping. Okay, A and B are two non-empty subset of a metric space, and epsilon B a positive number. A mapping H from A union B to A union B is it to be epsilon closed if it is going to be cyclic. That is, f of H of A naught is a subset of B naught, and H of B naught is a subset of A naught. And the another one is the distance between x comma uh, uh, h of x which is strictly less than distance between a comma b plus epsilon for all x belongs to a union b if, if you are thinking that a equal to b then what it will be the, it, this this function is nothing but the for the the map which we are given here okay this this function if a equal to b if you are taking a equal to b then the h is nothing but this uh, uh, this this the, the function which satisfies the g epsilon okay So uh, we can see some examples that uh, epsilon closed map. So this is my first example that uh, you take a center origin and a circle with the radius one. So clearly the distance between A and B is always be equal to one. And A not equal to A and B not equal to B is the thing. So any mapping satisfying that is uh, the point is mapping to the circle and circle is mapping to the point is an epsilon closing map. Okay. Because why any point, any if you are taking one point at here and one point at here, then the distance is always equal to one. Okay, so it will be always less than one plus epsilon for any epsilon positive. So it is going to be epsilon uh, close map. But the interesting thing is we can find we can have a discontinuous function also. We can have a discrete h may be a discontinuous function also. So that means that epsilon close mapping need not be continuous. Okay. Next, we are going to give an example that a continuous cycling map need not be a epsilon close. So we have given we have, we have given an example that you take a two segments that is in R2 only, whatever we are discussing only in R2. Okay, so it is a non-empty compact convex subset of R2. That is the first uh, in y axis one uh, one segment zero to one, and just translating to the this one to uh, one comma zero to one comma one. So. Here we have defined a map H, uh, H of all the elements will mapping to 1 comma 1 and all the elements in here is mapping to 0 comma 0. So the distance is always will be root 2. So whenever epsilon is less than root 2 minus 1, then this will not be a epsilon closed map. So here this function is a continuous function, but it is not a epsilon closed map. So we have given an example that a epsilon closed map need not be continuous and a continuous map need not be epsilon closed. Now, let me uh, give uh, an, another definition that is uh, like a fixed point property. We are giving a best proximity point property that a pair is said to have a best proximity point property if every continuous cycling map has a at least one best proximity point on A union B. So now let us uh, prove the theorem. And this is the theorem. We are this is one of the theorem uh, theorems in our uh, paper which we have recently communicated. Let A and B be non-empty compact subset of a metric space such that the pair A comma B has a P property. Number two, assume that for each epsilon positive, there is an epsilon closed function H epsilon from A union B to A union B, okay, such that the pair H, H epsilon of B naught comma H epsilon of A naught, this pair has a best proximity point, okay. Then any continuous cyclic function h from a union b to a union b satisfying h of a naught is subset of b naught and h of b naught is a subset of a naught has at least one best proximity point okay and note that when a equal to b then this theorem will reduce the uh, fixed point theorem which we have discussed in our preliminary section okay okay i'll i'll give as uh, some short proof of, uh, outline of this proof okay so proof is uh, using the epsilon close map, we have constructed a sequence uh, x epsilon in A, which satisfies the following two conditions. That is uh, distance between x epsilon comma h epsilon of, that is uh, p is what? That is a projection operator, p of h, h of x epsilon, which is equal to distance between a comma b, and which satisfies the next one, distance between p h of x epsilon comma h epsilon of p of h epsilon, which converges to distance between a comma b as epsilon tending to zero. 
okay so this is seems to be we can use the uc property because already we are having the space is having the p property and we have shown that every compact subset having a p property will have a uc property so again we are going to using uc property we can have these two sequence will x epsilon and this distance will converge to zero since x is a compactness then we can find an x star in a such that x epsilon converges to x star and then this will imply that distance will, uh, I, I'm not getting into the more detailed uh, in this uh, 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 theory. <coughs> I'm just giving the outline of the proof technique. That's all. Okay. Then the distance between x not, uh, sorry, x star comma pH of x star, which is equal to zero. That means this is equal to zero. That means, uh, okay, that is x star and h of x star, which is equal to distance between a comma. This means what? x star, which is equal to P of H of X star. That means distance between H star and H X star, which is equal to distance between A comma. So this is why we can, <coughs> we have generalized uh, the fixed point theorem of uh, uh, fixed point theorem for a, uh, no, for a continuous function in a metric space structure to a best proximity point theorem in a metric space structure. Okay. That's all. Uh, if you have any doubts, uh, thank you, uh, Professor Sankaraj. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so uh, now uh, we are expecting some questions or uh, any remarks. So, audience. Uh, I hope uh, there are uh, no questions. Uh, maybe uh, should I? Uh, may I ask one question? Uh, sure, sir. Sure, sure, uh, sure. Rather, it is better to say a remark uh, because in some cases we uh, we have seen that mm. if we assume in order mm. to give some proof of best proximity point theorem some mm. results, mm. if we assume uh, e property or maybe weak e property, then sometimes it is very strong. Hmm. And it uh, those proofs in particular certain situation, yes, those sir. proofs can be directly found by means of uh, BCP. Hmm. So uh, we have seen there are certain uh, results uh, it has been published. So okay. what is your comment regarding that? Yes, sir. Actually, the thing is uh, there are so many uh, unsolved problems in the Schwarzschild point theorem also. But the people's what we are what they are doing is they are just simply taking a uh, result and they are just uh, we can because uh, sometimes if, you, if today what we have discussed uh, uh, the op metric operator if you are com uh, if you are making a composition of metric operator then it will be obviously it will reduce to the fixed point theorem we can apply fixed point theorem to get the best spot point theorem yeah but that is a very uh, but the, in this case we cannot uh, apply the met uh, metric operator to we cannot use the fixed point theorem. Such problems are uh, still available in metric fixed point theorem. Yeah, yeah. Point theorem. That means we cannot reduce the best proximity point theorem with the use of any fixed point theorems. Such problems are still available in a uh, best proximity. No, uh, that, that I know. Uh, yes, uh, you, you rightly pointed out. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, OK. Uh, if there is no other questions, then definitely I must thank Professor Sankaraj for his nice talk. Uh, yes, it was actually very nice talk, and uh, I think all of you understand it very clearly. Okay. Thank you, Professor Sankar. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, sir, I am excited. Yeah, let me thank <laughs> to both of you, uh, uh, Dr. Shankar Raj for his nice talk, and uh, Dr. Lakshmi Kant Dev for chairing the session. And uh, let